it is this morning on ITV, Wednesday's edition with Evan Sunukugi. So we're going to be looking at uh, security challenges in our country today and starting from the recent of it all, talking about the letter that uh, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, pres former president uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, just wrote to so President Muhammad Buhari. And uh, it becomes very, very worrisome, most especially that uh, that letter actually came just about, uh, I think, almost the same day that uh, we had uh, uh, Mrs. Funke uh, or Lakurin, you know, that was gruesomely murdered uh, along Bini Ore Road. Uh, you know, you know, going somewhere she was murdered. So uh, a lot of people have uh, actually uh, reacted to all that. And uh, also looking at the letter now, it calls for, uh, you know, much attention. And uh, also it calls for concerns too. Well, we're going to be having uh, some excerpts from that letter, you know, directing the letter to President Muhammad Buhari from former President Obusegun of Basenjo. And uh, some have also said that uh, the letter is probably not written in good faith, that uh, Obasanjo has a kind of an unflinching access to uh, President Muhammad Buhari. So why would he go to the open to write uh, such a letter? If he has any suggestion, uh, he should have approached uh, PMB and uh, profile suggestions and solutions onto uh, the security issues that is going on in the country. But also looking at uh, the uh, present, uh, you know, uh, federal government, uh, they are also not resting on their oars. As a matter of fact, we are told that uh, the Senate has actually called for uh, a convocation for a national security summit uh, so that we can really talk about security. Uh, in Nigeria. So what are the issues as far as it relates to, to security in the country? And uh, this letter, uh, what does it really hold? Is it really just one of those letters? Remember, it is not the first time that uh, OBJ is writing a letter. Uh, so what are the issues this time? Well, to look at all this uh, this money, we are so privileged to have uh, uh, Mr. Tony Abolo, a renowned broadcaster, uh, my very, very senior colleague in media industry. Sai, welcome to this program this morning on ITV. Thank you very much. Yeah. And also we have uh, uh, Mrs. Omonigo, uh, Stella Omonigo. Uh, Madam, you welcome to this program this morning on ITV. Thank you, and good morning viewers at home. Yeah, we have a human rights activist with us, Nowita Ibutako. Nowita, you welcome to this program. Good morning viewers. Yeah. Now, let me start with uh, Mr. Tony Abolo. Now, let's look at uh, the letter. Let me just start by, by reading. Uh, the letter has about 17 uh, paragraphs. Now, it starts by uh, saying that I am constrained to write to you this open letter. And of course, I decided to make it open letter because uh, the issue is very weighty and must uh, be greatly uh, worrisome to all concerned Nigerians. And that means all right-thinking uh, Nigerians, uh, those residents in Nigeria. So the issue is, in, uh, is of momentous concern to all well-meaning and all right-thinking Nigerians. It must be of great concern to you. Uh, the collective uh, thinking and uh, uh, dialoguing is the best way of finding an appropriate and adequate uh, solution to the problem. Uh, the contents of this letter, therefore, should be available to all those who can help in providing effective solutions uh, for the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. That's insecurity in the land. Now, if you go down this letter, there are so many ways you can react to this letter. But let's really start from uh, this point. What do you think is really the motive behind this letter at this time? I don't know. Can, can we speculate? We are not your General Olusegun Obasanjo. He wrote the letter and has, uh, he has absolute right, one, as a past head of state, second of all, as an elder statesman, third of all, as a concerned Nigerian. And again, people tend to forget who formed SSS in Nigeria, the Secret Security Services in Nigeria. That was Olusegun Obasanjo many, many years ago with Rafin Daddy. So he knows about security and he is concerned as a former soldier. And like he said in that letter, he carries the scars of the Nigerian Civil War on him. And his own son carries the scars of Boko Haram uh, 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 gunshots on, 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 on him. So he has a, a, a double feel about this whole thing. Now, so when people begin to impute motive, I want to just perhaps put it this way so that we don't. Um, uh, 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 I don't belabor myself trying to analyze motive. The issue is this. In Nigeria, Nigerian leadership are forever deaf and dumb. 
they never listen to anybody except to themselves. No, but, but you can't no, say no, 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 uh, yeah, just take, that would take, be categorical. No, 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 I, mean, I don't know. Listen, at my age, I should see it is time not to begin to speak the truth because it's when you're busy coddling and being nice, Nigerian leadership never listens. It's when you are rude, you're insulting, then perhaps, and then you say something shocking, then they begin to listen. So that's why these things have to happen. So it is the way pe Nigerian leadership ever listens to its people. And this is all around. I'm not talking about only political leadership. Everywhere. That's the attitude. There's arrogance in when people have power. Then you have to remember, people say, oh, he has unfettered access to PNB. Unfettered access in Nigeria? It is not just possible because they don't listen. And why don't they listen? You see, look at the, the security architectural uh, management in Nigeria. Held by one tribe, one religion, one region. It makes it difficult. You see, I'm not looking at creative thinking. If you are coming from one area, you think in one particular direction, and you can be in error. But you needed a whole national body. All of us, that's the benefit of, look, because there are times I'll compare Nigeria with America, and that is, we have the benefit of all the ethnic nations to come together to make something out of it. That's the, that is what God has blessed us. But what happens? You, you drive everybody out and keep only yourself. Okay, where's the solution? No solution. You have your people, you don't change them. We are forever uh, uh, growing back and front, back and front, and there's no solution to the problem. So anybody suspecting motive. Then again, don't forget, who has the kind of braveness? Because you see, when you're dealing with the Fulanese, you must remember one thing. You need to be bold. If you're going to be timid, nothing is going to happen. And so he's the one who has the courage. He's the one who can confront them and bite the bullet as the americans will say and like to say even if he has to go to jail so be it but how many of us have the courage even to confront the leadership you hear people keep them quiet all over the country why should people keep quiet i mean this is an existential threat are we going to allow ourselves to die somebody shout somebody shouting and somebody's talking about motive oh if all don't want to die let them go ahead go on the road and wait for it okay uh, 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 madam uh, stella monigo now uh uh, some uh, probably see this letter as, uh, you, you know, having some uh, political undertone. Now, as, uh, you know, the argument is that when the federal government made some strides, uh, when they recovered uh, some, some of the Chiba girls, uh, they also recovered some of the Dapchi girls, uh, well, irrespective of the fact that Leah Sharibo is still not found. Now, uh, some say that Olusha Gombasinjo did not write any form of commendation letter to commend the federal government on its gains, uh, you know, fighting insecurity and all that. And now he's writing. So do you think this letter has any political coloration? You see, unfortunately for us, for us to be politicizing the security situation of the country is very, very unpatriotic. And as a follow-up to what our comrade here just said, if we're talking about the, that letter and the content of the letter, we should not be belaboring ourselves with either uh, the political undertone or the motive of the letter. The question is, is, are the content of the letter true? Is there any altar of truth in that letter? If there is, what is the way forward? Now, you're talking about commendation letter or not. We are we sure that actually this, there was anything like Chibo girls. That's, you know, I've been telling you that that one is relative. It was a kind of political propaganda. But even if that, yeah, if but, at all, but we saw some of the girls that Mr. were released. Mr. even if at all, that, that's, the least, that's the least of our problem right now in Nigeria. In fact, by the time he was re-elected, when I came on board the first time, I told you, I said, if we should stop talking about all these uh, corruption issues and let us deal with security issues, because that's is the major thing. But unfortunately, the matter is going down every day. The insecurity level is rising by the day. Is there any truth in it? Do we have Pulani X-Men attacking people? Do we have insecurity in the nation? If, if yes, the man did not only call on, uh, uh, on, the, on PMB, the man called on all Nigerians and anybody who can profess solution to this problem in Nigeria. Because it is high time we all agreed that we have a problem in Nigeria and the problem of insecurity. In fact, let me tell you, we are sitting on a time bomb that can explode at any time. Is it when it explodes that we start looking for, for, for a solution because of our political affiliation, because of our religious affiliation, then you see the truth and you don't want to say the truth. It's very much of patriotic of Nigerians to be, to be politicizing that, that letter and to be reading negative you know, tones on in that letter. That is not right. Now, I went through that letter very well, and what he was trying to say is that, look, we have a problem, a common problem, and that 
people are being instigated and being provoked, tribes are being provoked into action. Now, if there is a retaliation of these people, we think nobody has monopoly of violence. If another tribe comes up now to say, look, we are going to retaliate, how do you think Nigeria will, what will, what will become of Nigeria? Of course, it will result into a civil war. And people who experienced civil war before have been telling us and have been warning us that Nigeria cannot afford to have another civil war. Of course, this man knows about it, so what are we doing about it? Okay. Now, now which I would tackle, uh, there's no doubt that Tulusha Gong passenger is at, is at it again. In an expanse yeah, yeah. of uh, uh, five, six years now, he has written three letters. Now, what do you think is his, uh, what do you think is, is, is aim? What does he really want to achieve with all this? Well, uh, first of all, it's quite unfortunate that we have a security situation that is uh, alarming. And to start with, why did Obasanjo not write a letter when common people were being killed? Let's, 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 you know, is it because Olakunle, the daughter of uh, Afenifere Chieftain, had been brought down, that Obasanjo was writing letters? Because I speak for the people. The people have been bored down every day. The people, uh, you know, so what are we talking about? See, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the elite, they, 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 they protect themselves. They yeah, need but, but yeah. yeah, because it, 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 it's unlikely that they've been, that, that been uh, you, you see the one that been killed recently? It's yeah, okay, okay. 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 Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So, 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 looking at that. Yeah, now, but, but I think we should put things in the right perspective. Yeah, but can I give my information? Yeah, so yeah. There's, no, there's no part of that letter where uh, it stated that it was written because well, of the... Well, that was written... Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's we started, I was not about motive. Yeah, just... Whether that there was any motive, or how do I feel... For me, what Obasanjo has done uh, is, is paint to the gallery. The man is not a super statesman. He's not the first statesman that we have had in this country. You understand? And so uh, he, he, I, I see political undertones. Though regrettably, the, the, uh, there is security you know, uh, situation in the country. But looking at it, I, I don't see it from a patriotic angle. The man is selfish. He's selfish. And he had gone through the, the, the leadership process, and we know what he did. You see, so the point I'm trying to make is this. When Jonathan was in power, we had security situation. We all saw bombings, you know, left and right. And what have you. So that, that is not to say that we're not saying that the prior administration should not handle security headlong. You understand? But looking at Obasanjo as a person, he's the wrong guy doing what he's doing. Because when he was in power, we know what he did. We, we know these things. We, we know the atrocities. For me, Obasanjo is a tragedy. And we don't go to the elections. This man has a political hatred for this government. Okay. I don't want to respond to I want to respond. No. He has a political hatred for this government. Okay, now you're done. I'm not done. All right. So, because so, and I just asked somebody a while ago, we know the challenges confronting this government. This government is not a first-class government. And I've said that this is not the kind of government that other people even want in Nigeria. But we have, we have a situation where the political atmosphere has been emasculated. The political process has been taken over by the elite. And we now have a president that is sitting. What do we do? We have to solve these security challenges. And for a security summit. And for solving this security problem. But looking at the character that is dishing out this letter. Thank you. Mr. Tony Abolo, now uh, you heard what uh, Nwita Ibutako said. Uh, at least you have uh, the right to respond to some of the issues that he said. But I also want you to look at the, uh, look at the, the letter this way. Uh, because for some, some say that this letter is capable of uh, being incisive. I mean, to incite the public to go to take arms and all that. I mean, happening at this time. Do you see it in that uh, way? Definitely. That is, that is a bogus theory. Very bogus. Look, Nigeria, like Stella said, we're sitting on a time bomb. You see, what is remaining now, whether right or wrong, it is said, Anglo Abulai told all southern uh, all uh, Fulani headsmen who are in the south to begin to move up north. Once that movement begins, and you heard Ghani Adams say we are capable of responding, uh, it, it has nothing to do with Tobas and just letter. Nigerians are waiting to be told, go to your tents 
owe Israel. And that's yes. all it takes. Because we had that experience during Abacha. Well, is that, is Not that the best solution to I our problems Listen, now? because the leadership has failed, has no capacity to handle, remember in that letter. But, but, but you, cannot, no, you cannot say so. Please, no, no, we can't please. No, no, no. Uh, listen. Except if we are not wait. grateful of some of their achievements. Listen. I mean, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. We couldn't, look, where's the difference between Nigeria, Guatemala, Colombia, Afghanistan, Iraq? Here we are. So don't, don't, don't say, where is the competency? Okay, look, I've even read a letter by somebody who grew up in the barrack, whose father was a soldier. Look, how many years does it take us to solve Boko Haram? Is this how you wage a war? I'm not a soldier, but definitely this is not how to wage a war. You needed international aid. You needed like a pincer action to get multilateral, uh, multilateral agencies to come on them. You are not doing that. Then it, it festers. It becomes banditry in Zamfara. It becomes kidnapping in Sokoto. It comes down as, 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 uh, um, um, as, as uh, uh, herdsmen killing people all over the whole place. It happens in Abraka. It happened here in the Edo State, Odigi, of Uwebe, near Gerebode. It has been, has been happening all around us. Then you now say, where is the competency? It's happening every day, and you can't even travel. You are sure that you will pass, 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 pass all right. So we're in a very difficult situation. And until you acknowledge it, it just means that we now need, like that letter that Robert and Joe wrote, that we need a national, perhaps, I'm just saying perhaps, a national conference on security. Okay. But is that, no, but is it even necessary? Where are the experts? I'm not an expert. There are experts. Why are you not calling experts? Because you see, every other day you heard the president sat with security chief. They sat down, security chief. How many meetings have they held? What has happened? Nothing. Then you are not calling security summit. The Senate says security summit. That's not what you need. You need expert advice, expert knowledge to deal with where we are. And then you see there are fundamental issues that people tend to forget. How do you keep give somebody 13 million in a month? In the Senate, then you are telling people to be hungry. Then you don't you don't talk of security challenge. Where's the good governance? Where's the example from the elite? Where is the example of leadership? Where, where, where are we getting this? Nigerians have dropped into poverty. Ninety-eight million by the latest statistics of Nigerians are poor. Then you are talking about security. Look at what happened. What, what is happening all over the whole country? So I mean, we there is incompetency. And people are toying with it. Look, let me tell you one thing that people never want to analyze. What is the level of intelligence of those who lead us? Okay. Have you ever asked yourself that question? All right. Intelligence. All right, now, thank you. Let me come to Stella Monigo. Now, uh, 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 Stella, I, I think we should be able to really uh, differentiate between uh, criticism here. Because yeah. for some people, uh, let me read out an excerpt uh, for you in the, one of the paragraphs. Now, for over 10 years, uh, for four of you, which have uh, been the captain of the ship, uh, Boko Haram, has uh, menacingly re uh, ravaged uh, the land. And in spite of the government's claim of victory over Boko Haram, uh, the potency and the activities of Boko Haram where they are active remain on, uh, ad ad administered. Now, for some people, if you read through down, uh, it, it appears that at times that Obasanjo was probably just trying to criticize uh, PMB. I don't agree with you completely, but let me just put, I just want to take it one after because the other. We are looking at just hold on, yeah. please, Mr. Evans. You know, I want to take people down memory lane. It's like Nigerians forget so easily that it was this same Obasanjo who came out in 2015 and told us that the only solution to Nigerian security problem and corruption problem was PNB. And he endorsed PNB based on what he knew about him in the past and in military. And he told us that, look, this man will help us to solve permanently the problem of Boko Haram. He acknowledged the fact that there was a security problem that time. And then, he, in fact, he told PDP, he, he told his car that time and did a lot of things. He supported, he supported the PNB. It is this same man that the people are now claiming hates PNB so much and hates PNB's government. Now, I want to say this. The problem we are having in Nigeria is that most of us are being blinded by psychophancy. Now, if you like somebody and you endorse somebody before, based on the, the, what you are expected of the person or based on the person's previous character, and you are now seeing that there are some changes that are going to be detrimental not only to you, but the entire country, what is wrong in taking another step to say, no, this thing is not right. You have to make it right. This thing is wrong. Are you not aware that Obasanjo has gone to meet PNB several times? We see it on news headlines that Obasanjo went to see PNB uh, behind closed doors. Not once, not twice. I'm sure they were discussing issues. And then when the poor man will see that nothing is coming out of whatever issue they discussed behind closed doors, he decided to write 
you know, letters. And this particular letter, look, let me, like I said before, let us not be blinded whether our boss has been writing letters before and I've been criticizing PNB on. The truth about it is that he did not exempt himself from the, from the insecurity problem of Nigeria because he started from 10 years previous. And then talked in, he graduated by telling us how this issue now uh, have now graduated. The issues have now graduated, the insecurity problems have now graduated from you know the periphery now to all parts of Nigeria. Of course, he also went ahead to tell us it started from the northern part of Nigeria, but now it is infiltrating middle bet now is a no-go area and now it's coming to the south and now to the west like we said before you cannot sleep with your two eyes closed and nigerians are telling me that obasan just later is not unpatriotic and should be forgotten it should not be forgotten what the man said there is that let there be a summit a security summit let them call let them declare state of emergency of course we are in a pro we are we are having major issues yesterday i'm sure you are aware mm -hmm. that on this lagos Lagos Benin Road yesterday, why they had several security checkpoints that in between, Robert, these men were operating in between the security checkpoints. Have you also not heard that several times they will say, ah, let's go, security men are coming. So who gives them the information that they will soon get to that place? There are most in the house, and we should be able to, we should be able to uh, agree that we have a problem until Nigerians accept that there is a problem in our security uh, uh, position and in our governance. We will not go anywhere. We will end up having problems. People are now, I mean, um, traditional leaders are now calling people to start securing themselves. Now, when I want to secure myself and my, and my constituency, you know what it means? That means that any other person, an outsider, is a threat to my constituency. By the time we start getting to that, the, to that point, civil war has started. And of course, our veterans here can tell us how they, what they experienced in the time of civil war. I read Festus a uh, 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 books on civil war, and I don't wish, my grandmother told me stories of civil war, and I don't wish to experience civil war in Nigeria. Now, not only that, because of these old sec security issues, other states, other foreign countries are now, you know, tagged, tagging Nigerians as uh, terrorists. Of course, you are aware of the latest situation with the uh, American embassy and the uh, drop box issue. It boils down to security issue. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're also aware that even at the airport, at entrance, uh, at entry point in uh, the U.S., Nigerians are turned back. They are treated as common criminals. They have now, they have not generalized it. Everybody is now seen as a terrorist. And you are telling me that Obasanjo just later is a polit is, is political. Please let us let us move beyond that. Nigeria should pass that stage and start seeing that we have a common problem, irrespective of our political affiliation, irrespective of whoever you are worshiping as your as your political god. We have a common problem, and we should be able to come together and solve this problem. Okay. Now, now which I Butako, you are a, a conflict uh, yeah. a resolution expert yes, by yes. by profession and yes. by practice and yes. all that. Now. Uh, if you also read down the letter, uh, there was there is a point that uh, OBJ made reference to the last national confab of 2014. Now the federal government is saying that through the national assembly this time that they are going to convocate uh, a national security summit. So which one do you think uh, should be used now? Uh, should we go back to the reports of the last national confab, or just go and uh, take the the uh, uh, Senate's position of, of convocating? Uh, national Security Summit, where do we go from well, here? Uh, pathetically, just as uh, our Tony Abedou started, sometimes our leaders, they don't practicalize uh, solutions. When you give them ideas how to get things done, they don't listen, you understand? The issue is not the, what, the, what we have had before, but in most cases, they, they practically bring it into reality. Putting rank, uh, rank pegs in rank holes, so I can get this thing done. You understand? Uh, you, you see, it, 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 we have fantastic uh, blueprints, security blueprints. If you ask me, I have, I have I, 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 as a piece of conflict resolution uh, practitioner, I have blueprints to solve certain security things. But will, 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 will it be accepted? <laughs> Is it when you now spend billions of naira putting some elite in one room? Or you want, uh, you want, or another uh, so uh, tea that do not get solutions. Yeah, no. Which are in so, this in this situation yes. now? Where can Nigeria go? We have the reports of the National Confab as talked as uh, mentioned in this report. Then of course we have the Senate trying to uh, convocate a national security summit. So what do we do? So my 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 advice to the to the presidency now is to put his hands together. But if Nigerians are calling for a a, a new National Security Summit, and for it. But I'm not saying that it will be another 
avenue to waste taxpayers' money. But the, the federal government should put his hands together. I want to challenge the Obama administration to quickly put his uh, ministers, his executive team in place. You understand? Because we need to secure this country. And the, the point is that people have been killed. Mm. This current situation is alarming. You cannot dispute that. <laughs> so the, 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 the challenge before this government is to put itself together, make sure that uh, 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 certain things are put in place, and secure the country. For instance, for instance, I, I want to take a lot, I want to talk a lot. For instance, in People's Republic of China, you have, uh, and we are talking of unemployment in this country, employ capable people. There are people who are roaming about the street who cannot, you know, who, 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 who are looking for employment. And, and, and you agree with me that the Nigerian landscape is grossly uh, underutilized. In terms of yeah, yeah, you know, grossly, and uh, we don't have enough security personnel mm. to man every inch of this country. You understand? So, and the, the, the security chiefs, the security personnel at that echelon, they have to put it on, you are, you are taking caps because the president cannot do it alone. Yeah. But, but the president have to drive them. We are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not calling for vision. We are calling for extraordinary ideas yeah. to get this done. But, but one of the ways to get this done is to employ people. Put enough people in the police, uh, you know, security uh, apparatus, employ enough people. people to, like I said, in the Republic of China, you have, you, you, see, you see people's uh, liberation, uh, you, you see them almost everywhere. Community I mean, policy, we, this, we need ideas. I mean, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony Abolo, I, I want you to also uh, 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 lead your voice to, uh, because it, it appears we're in a crossroad, even, uh, even in this discussion now. Now, there is a call for, uh, to go back to the National Confab, of which most Nigerians want. That's and of it. course, the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, is trying to toe the line of uh, convocating a National Security uh, Summit. But that Security Summit cannot really handle, can you really handle uh, the, the, the extent, the magnanimity, the extent of this security pro problem that we have now, can it? Okay, um, my take on, on this is this way. We must have to solve a fundamental problem in Nigeria, which is the lack of creative thinking. Okay. It is so fundamental because it is evident in the way decisions are taken at the upper levels in this country, which cascades to the rest of the polity. Now, Nigerians are so emotive, ethnically uh, de uh, derived in their arguments, religiously driven, and not patriotic enough when they look at things. So can you have people who think logically, with emotional intelligence, with great vision and passion in order to lead a country? Where are they? Because you see, until you get those people, even if you're going to call another confab, what happens is, as soon as we gather again, a southerner is looking at the problem from a southern perspective, mm -hmm. a northerner is looking at it from a northern perspective, mm -hmm. then an easterner, a westerner, an ethic, a this, and a, until you get people who are de-tribalized. Because this is where the problem now of Nigeria is. And I made a That's mention it. of something which you, you may not even take cognizance of. You can't have, look at the security architecture. As soon as they go into the room, they went into the room, came out with Ruga. All right, that is all their brain could tell them. Ruga. Then Gorba Shehu, who is the presidential spokesman, says, We have come and we have taught and we have taught. The presidency has taught. What are you thinking? Pre what is presidency? Is it President Buhari and his wife? Is presidency? What is the cabinet? I, I mean, do you know what is called a presidency? Mm. That is getting the best of Nigeria to come together to articulate a position yeah. with expertise and if need be, get expertise from outside of the country. Look, Americans have been dealing with Afghanistan, Iraq. They have something that they can give you. You get a British M M15 to come in here. You get even some expert, even the, somebody who wrote something from, um, is it uh, uh, Burkina Faso? There are people. India, Pakistan, you don't use them. Whom are you using? Who is t training you? Who's talking to you? I mean, here we are because you see, look, we must go back even to the fundamental. And the most fundamental again is to look at the constitution. And I'd like to draw everybody's eyes to chapter two of the Constitution, of the Constitution, under fundamental objectives and directives of state policy. Section 14, subsection 26, where it is expressly stated that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. If there's nothing else you do, it is security 
and welfare of the people. And when I say incompetence, you say I shouldn't use the word incompetency. How do you have a country dissolving before your very eyes? I mean, I'm 76 now, and I've seen this country come from its glorious days to where it is now banana. We are a failed state, and some of us are very worried. Because even if I'm not worried about myself, what because like, like, no, what do you want me to say? Like Clark would say, we are the boarding pass. We're carrying a boarding pass to go into the aircraft. What about our children? What about our grandchildren? Yes. What about their families? What about other people? Should we not be concerned? And therefore, when government cannot sit down and do its primary function, that Nigeria is a failed state, it's a pity that after 59 years, we're not talking about satellite. Look at Rwanda. Rwanda just done satellite mm -hmm. to go, have interconnectivity mm -hmm. of schools. Um, China is sending its people to Ivy League institutions in, 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 in United States, and they are going to study robotics, artificial intelligence. That's all we're talking. We're India is up in space. Yeah, we're not doing that. You're talking about cattle and colonies. That's all we've been doing since he won in February till now. It's about cattle, about where you're going to pick cattle. Whereas even if an intelligence should even tell you, if it is cattle that you so love, there is dairy that comes from cattle. There's high on skin that can go for export. There's beef. There's grass. There is veterinary soldier. There are animal husbands. The people who finish in agriculture. What are you making of them? Instead of also convert it into a trillion naira business, what are we doing? We're using it to be committing murder. And because you see, when people are very sentimental or rather very passionate about that none of these things should continue, is that they use, that's the takia of the Islamic faith. They now deceived us. You are allow cattle to be roaming. Then when they are roaming, they carry gun, carry this, and uh, 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 come into yeah, your yeah, yeah, but, sorry, but I no. want us to be mindful of that. Uh, no. Because uh, there, there are some very good people that carry cattle around and they do their job. I'm just saying people use and that and as a decoy yeah. to come into this insecurity problem. And we're saying, look at it, even on a major scale, should you be running in a country where northeast is in flames, northwest is in, in disaster, middle, belt. Belt. middle belt, belt is bad, the then belt. south is this, w w then how do you call, I mean, does it, how does the president didn't go to bed feeling that I'm running a country and there's nobody who is safe. Okay, now, Can Stella, I hear yeah, Stella, I should lend your voice now. Yeah. Now, uh, you see, uh, Tony just quickly made reference to Rwanda, and yeah. most of us there will quickly point at Rwanda. But Rwanda went through a whole lot, they yes. went through genocide and all yes. that. Now, should Nigeria <laughs> go through that too? That is the question. Should we come to the extent of going through what Rwanda went through before we will now come out of it? No, and then coming back to the confab issue. I think the federal government should move out of the political terrain to look for experts, to look for people, intellectuals, who can prefer solution to some of these problems. They should move away from, you know, relatives, putting relations or uh, friends, you know, in political or in some, in some of these major key positions. Let's look for people who have the interest of the country at heart and not talking about their you know, personal gratification. So and between, I mean, between the national confab and the... Yes, that is, is you know, let's start with the national confab. That's what I'm trying to say. You know why? It took time for them to constitute the members, the people who know, uh, to attend that confab. And it was... Yeah, it but was but all, it hold on, that when hold on, that, when that hold on. It was, was all for a long time. That, the argument was that uh, the way most members were constituted was not done well. But I know that we had so many intellectuals, at least I know that ASU members were involved, mm. and of course we heard it took time, and the country spent billions of Naira, of Naira yeah. on that confab. Now, my point is that let them make that report available. Let them throw it to the open. Let us start from the re confab reports. I'm not saying that this particular security summit is bad. It can also, everything can help mm. right now. Mm. But let's start with the confab. Okay. Please, uh, no, 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 just a minute. Yeah. I, since you threw up the Rwanda thing, I want to use that as a public way of pointing an example because I teach it as a model of development. And we define it as authoritarian democracy. Mm -hmm. It looks contradictory as mm -hmm. a terminology. Mm -hmm. Why do we use it as a, as a model? It's a model because Paul Kagame was a former secret service man. He came with all the zeal of making Rwanda recover. And he came to be a father figure. Father figure. In that place, you don't refer to anybody's ethnicity in Rwanda. And so he now comes and gives them a strong arm of good, benevolent, despotic government. <laughs> when you have that, because you need that in a country that is as disparate and as troublesome as, as Nigeria. Nigeria. Do you have that kind of a leadership? All you have is somebody who's pandering to his group. We are saying, come out and be our father. When you are our father. Because that is what has made Rwanda become a successful model. And let me also share this with Nigerians, that who made 
who was the greatest advisor of Paul Gagame that we are now touting Rwanda as an example of uh, development in Africa? OBA Zekweseli was the advisor to Paul Kagame. The Nigerian? The Nigerian. Just like Idi Kakalu was the advisor to Korea. He left for World Bank. Two Nigerians. And yet, do you use the expert? Like uh, my friend uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Nowinter was saying, put round pegs in round holes. Then we'll get the answer. But in Nigeria, all we want is Otemeno, my yeah, brother, well, well, my well, cousin. When you, when you talk about OBSA <laughs> Christina, I remember she was uh, Minister of Education with yes. Jonathan and yes. all that. And some of the problems that we are talking about now. No, no, no. Don't move away. That's illogicality. That's illogicality. I'm coming, sir. Security. Let's go to the tragedy of the Nigerian situation is that fantastic blueprint to be presented to, to leadership, mm. to those who are the head But they don't... They don't say They, 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 they don't particularize it. I've said it a few minutes ago. It's unfortunate. So we, we, we are challenging the present administration to, to put in the to right people. The people. Don't uh, uh, ethnicize. Don't, you know, just put the right guys. And he has, the present government has the greatest opportunity because he's forming his uh, executive council now. You understand? Put in the right guys and let them be. be and, it's, and, and, and this is the second time. There's no that said uh, tenure. So I will challenge the Buhari administration to, 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 to be focused, to think of the people. Now, what is really wrong with uh, Because uh, he said he talked about Obi Ezekwisili, that was yes. uh, Minister of Education during Jonathan's time, even uh, out part of OBJ's administration and all that. Now, Corruption! They will not do the right thing. If your people are talking here, that's right. That's not to Cecilia. She could advise, advise, she could advise uh, Paul uh, Gagame of yeah. Rwanda. See, the, the tragedy is that the leadership in Nigeria, in most cases, is deficient. You understand? I like that. Uh, that I like that. That is the fact of the matter. <laughs> we don't have to sentimentalize. We don't sentimentalize this issue. So, and we know the, uh, the shortcomings of this government. I've got to some people that this government has just had a second term in office. No, uh, the article thing is there. But let's support this government to secure this, this country. And we, know, we should not run away from the fact that we are saboteurs in this country. We are people who do not want Nigeria to be stabilized. We are, we are politicians who are, who, are, who are sitting on bottomless pit of dollars and ready to pursue this government. That fact is there. I, I, I have a piece of public resolution. People, people make money from insecurity. People make money from disaster and tragedies. So we cannot run away from that. If you are challenging up uh, the Bawari, if you are saying he's not doing this, he's putting his brothers there, put his Okay, the Pulani Esme. I would not say the, the Esme that are everywhere. Did we have kidnappers during the Jonathan uh, period? Where the kidnapping start in this country? Mm. The people that kill uh, this, uh, uh, this our, uh, our, our, our person, Ola Kuri, as if we established it was uh, uh, Pulani Esme. They could have been kidnappers. So, but we're not saying that the, the, the problem, there are people who are ready to spoil the soup, national soup. They don't yeah. want it. Oh, right. look, you can just but not the constitution yeah. that you just read. Yeah. 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 Let him make security issue a paramount issue, issue. And you should not politicize it. Oh, there are facts in OBJ. 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 civil society, the guy should be on top of the situation. To go out and, you know, reiterate these OBJ letters. Forget about the political undertone of the letter. But it should not be done in such a way to incite the public. There is not to incite. They should not be a government. That will not be a government. No, but you know in Nigeria it is that you should never speak. Everybody should keep quiet. He's keeping quiet. No, 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 keeping quiet. That's what I brought us to. Keep quiet. 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 We can't, uh, we can't exhaust this discussion. We can't exhaust it.